I'm trying my sweater on for the first time in a long time and I have a feeling it's kind of massive. When this video comes out, I should have this pattern ready. So this is called the perfect day beanie. Boy, today I just feel like I'm sick of winter. I'm sick of living in a country where the winter is so long. Hello and welcome to Tallinn. I am gonna show you a very special place, which is a total do-it-yourself crafter, knitter, crocheter, anyone who does things by themselves, uh, paradise. This is a place that I've visited multiple times before. Today I'm on a mission to find buttons. I have my new cardigan with me, so I'm gonna try to find buttons for that. I'm gonna try to find some other cool buttons, some things, I'm gonna show you what they have, so Do not be fooled by the exterior. This might look like a very strange place, but inside there is something very nice. Right, we've just spent probably an hour at Karnalux. So Karnalux is where we went. It's, um, what do you call it? Like a wholesale place uh, actually, but anyone can come here. Um, and they have like everything you can imagine from beads, buttons, uh, yarns. They don't have, I mean, they have quite a lot of like acrylic yarns and stuff. So it's not like maybe the best place if you're just hunting for yarns. Uh, I got some, um, a bit of yarn and but lots of buttons um everything like supplies wise uh knitting needles um they have fabric like all those kind of things they have so if you're ever in Tallinn, it's definitely worth the visit also just because like the place is huge and very cheap <laughs> and yuki also got some uh threads for his uh backpacks like some elastic cords, elastic cords so yeah cool new color yeah, they have like all kinds of like zippers, cords, all those kind of things, uh, trinkets that you can imagine. Just next to Kanalox, there's a little yarn shop called Long Reng and Lemast Wool and Woolen, uh, which I always go to. They have like lots of drops and a lot of like their own yarn, so we're gonna go and see what they have. my sweater on for the first time in a long time and I have a feeling it's kind of massive. Okay, almost nine months pregnant and yeah, definitely fits my pregnant belly, but I think I've accidentally kind of knitted a size large. I'm not sure what happened, maybe it's because I'm pregnant. <laughs> I've somehow miscalculated a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like it, it's really oversized, but maybe I hadn't been intended for it to become quite this oversized, but it is what it is, and I'm definitely gonna continue it, but uh, maybe I have to make a smaller size after this one. So the body is definitely on the larger size. Really kind of big, also oversized sleeves, but I mean, the pattern, I adore. Really, really like it.
I have had a really bad start of the day. I woke up and just instantly felt like today is one of those days where I can't really make any decisions. Like there's so many things that I kind of think I should be doing or should get done. And then the brain just goes like into this kind of overwhelmed state. And I thought I'd go into town, into my city office. I have like lots of patterns I should sit with and things I should prepare. And then I have this aqua, uh, like pregnancy uh, aqua gymnastics thing. Um, and suddenly like everything just felt like too much. And I don't know, I've been crying and just feeling utterly useless. And I think I was like trying to think like why, why that happened. I don't know if I got triggered by some videos I saw on Instagram about like moms giving advice. Um, I think there's quite a lot of that and it can get honestly quite overwhelming when you see all these videos like what you should be doing and 10 things I wish I knew before I became a mother and how to prepare and this and that and tips and advice and I mean I'm sure um, there's a lot of value in it as well but sometimes it can also be really overwhelming so I feel like I don't want to see any of like no advice <laughs> and maybe the other thing that I struggle with is just I don't have really the energy so usually I know that what helps me and my mood is switching location uh, exercising uh, meeting some friends being social but like I just feel quite low on energy which I think is totally normal when you're almost nine months pregnant um but that is still somehow hard because then it's like okay well what do I then do to make myself feel better now I went <laughs> into Yuki's office had a bit of a cry um let it all out and um then decided okay like just skip all plans for today all expectations just go for a walk um Maybe I'll just be at home today, do the things that I feel like I have to get done. Maybe I can just do them tomorrow. Maybe that is okay. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that it's definitely not every day that I feel super energetic or like joyful, even though I tried on this channel to focus more on that and spread like my enthusiasm for knitting and all that good stuff. Um, and generally I do feel like I'm a pretty upbeat person, but like today, I don't know, like for me, it's the hardest when I kind of lose interest in everything or I don't have the energy. And because then I go into this a little bit, maybe toxic thinking of, I start beating myself up for feeling the way I feel if I feel miserable, even though I know that usually when I start to feel like that, the best way to get out of that is to just allow it to be, um, allow the emotions to come. Then usually like having a cry or feeling like having a proper pity party for myself, usually then it actually helps, like the feeling goes away. Um, and then just like something small, like, okay, going for a walk. Um, just changing like your state of being can be enough but oh, boy today just feel like I'm sick of winter I'm sick of living in a country where the winter is so long cold and dark um, really sick of winter clothing kind of sick of being so pregnant because everything is exhausting and not being able to wear any nice clothes you know like these like really kind of stupid things of course everything is really generally really good but these kind of things today just like got to me It's crazy, like one of the hardest things, I think, uh, being this far pregnant is just walking. Like I walk so slow and it's just because, well, my body's heavier, everything's like looser around the hips. And then sometimes I get these like, uh, that the uh, belly gets like really stiff and kind of uh, a little achy or it doesn't feel like good to walk really fast. It kind of, I think it's like these kind of practice contractions uh, that you get. Um, so yeah, that's been like a bit of a <laughs> surprise and it's so funny, like now when we go for walks with Yuki, uh, and we were just for a walk like a couple of days ago and he was like, oh yeah, I forgot that these walks are now like this really, really slow pace when it's so cold because then you have to like put on more clothes just to not get so cold because I like, can't walk so briskly. 
back home going for a walk was definitely the right decision uh had some uh, lunch also so I feel much better now and I want to show you uh, some things I'm working on and some yarns I picked up recently also I am wearing um, the daydreamer cardigan that I was working on in my previous video so here it is now complete I'm sitting kind of slouchy you can't maybe see but um, I added these really nice buttons so I got these golden buttons in Tallinn in Karnalux um, I added some snap buttons here um, on the inside, but then just uh, attach this button here in the front. I think it does something I could add something to it and that way I didn't have to make buttonholes. I feel like buttonholes sometimes have a tendency to stretch out quite a bit um, Or maybe that's just me not doing them uh, Snug enough, but I also did, couldn't really decide when I was knitting this So then I've just had some snaps and then I've added these buttons later on and I've decided to call this card again the daydreamer card again and now actually I already have sent it for tech editing and I will be sending out a test knitting uh, call um, if you'd like to be on my test knitters email list because I sometimes get people asking how that works. I have, um, I'll put it in the description below, I have an email list where I always send out um, calls to apply for different test knit uh, opportunities. So being on that list doesn't oblige you to do anything, but then you'll just get notified because I don't have them anywhere like publicly or anything like that but it always happens through email. But so yeah, in Karnalux in Tallinn, um, I actually bought this yarn as well. This is from Rowan called Felted Tweed in like a really gorgeous olive green color. And I haven't knitted anything in a felted tweed or in this color for a long time, but suddenly I just felt like this color was just really, really speaking to me. There was actually another green color that I was trying to find, but they didn't have enough skeins of it that I could only find like, five or six, so I felt like mm, it's better to get like a proper sweater quantity amount. So I think I have 600 grams, 12 skeins of this all in all. I also bought Cornwall linen. Um, I haven't actually taken it out from here yet. Um, and this is for a really special project that I'm saving or I have in mind. Um, so it's this kind of, I think it's a linen and a wool blend, but I like that it's, not even like it's spun a little bit like uneven so i think it will create a really interesting fabric and texture and that is exactly what i need for this project that i have in mind that i'll probably not start until like maybe summer um then actually i didn't did buy these yarns i didn't buy them from kind of looks um or the thing that i'm working on right now i started this yesterday i just cast on for a super simple this is going to be a really basic comfy sweater in also in drops melody in the color well this is the color number six it's a really nice like baby pink color and i'm using one strand of silk mohair again this is from filcolana called tilia i think in the color sakura i just think that these borsted alpac yarns which i really love because they're so like non itchy and so fluffy like it just creates this like you just like need to have this in your life i feel this fabric um but sometimes what I feel is that the um, it can be a little like matte or a little dull, the fabric. So I have now discovered this with this cardigan, <laughs> that when you pair that with a silk mohair strand, I think it really gives it a little bit more luster, a little bit more shape and structure, because the silk mohair just gives it that, so it's not so flopsy. Um, so yeah, I'm doing that for this one as well. This is gonna be the upper back. I haven't decided yet if I want to do like a V-neck. I think I want to do a pretty large neck. Also, I'm not sure if I want to do like a cardigan or a sweater. I feel like cardigan would maybe make more sense once the baby comes and I have to like breastfeed and you know, all that action going on. Um, but I'm not quite sure yet, but I adore this color and I also got, so this I got from that little shop Wool and Woolen that I visited in Tallinn, which is just like across the street from Karnalux in Tallinn. Um, and so I got this color as well, also in Trops Melody, because apparently I have like a melody phase going on. This is very similar to Borstet Alpaca from uh, Sunnes Garn. Um, and there's like other also these kind of brushed alpaca yarns out there. This is the color 25 and I'm going to pair it with one strand of Tilia Filcolana in the color Flamingo, which I'm obsessed with, which I just finished. Um, I did this Rebel Soul Beanie, pink beanie in. Um, I used Filcolana in the color 
uh, Flamingo Bytilia and one strand of John Arban Textiles um, Knit by Numbers in color 24. I adore this. The Rebel Soul Beanie is just such a like must have beanie, I feel. And then, I don't know, I think maybe I have worn this at some occasions here in my vlogs, but I'll show you. So this is the perfect day beanie that when this video comes out, I should have this pattern ready. So this is called the perfect day beanie. Also such a nice and quick project to work. This one I've knitted with one strand of merino in a fingering weight and two strands of uh, silk mohair. So it has like a really, really nice kind of sheen and you have this like fold up edge. So it's all done in stock and it's stitch in the round. So it's like a super, you know, hang your brains on the coat hanger. <laughs> That's a saying in Finnish. I don't know if you can say that in English, um, but basically that you don't have to think about anything. You just like knit and then you knit first, like double the size of this folded brim. And then you just knit it together here with the cast on edge. So you get this really nice fold up edge and then you continue and then you have some decreases here for the top. So I'm definitely going to make myself another one. I'm thinking maybe like a pale yellow color because I have a lot of beanies in like pink and reds and uh, well also two blue beanies by now. Um, so maybe like a pale yellow would be nice. And then I have this beanie that I'm also not sure if I've shown you. Um, this is just a rib beanie that has also like a folded uh, brim here. Um, this one I haven't done the pattern for yet. I have it in a notebook somewhere, but I have to kind of just write that, get that written up and then also on to test knitting. So again, if you want to test this, make sure to go and sign up for my email test knitters list. So those are the things that I'm working on right now. I do want to cast on for another Daydreamer card again. I'm thinking maybe in this color, um, cause this is like, I just wanted to have this in every color because I think this is so nice. <laughs> but um, maybe this would be nice to kind of see, or I'm also thinking like in white, it would be super nice. Um, so maybe I have to make it in a white color and this color, because this one I'm really eager to try out and see how it actually looks uh, in this half fisherman's rib structure. yesterday after having that really lousy day yesterday um i went into town and uh actually i want to show you um i finished the body of my bubblicious uh, sweater so i want to show you how that looks but um i also went into town yesterday and got some new yarns um that i'm really excited about and i want to talk about some future projects um that i'm working on but before that i do want to say Thank you to today's sponsor of this video, which is AkiFlow. I have been on a mission recently to try to get more organized. Um, and I think I spoke about this in my last video um, before going on maternity leave, um, which I don't know exactly how that's gonna look yet. But before that, I'm gonna try to be very productive and get everything organized. Uh, also have my assistant Kelsey help me, have Yuki help me with some things and uh, I've just been really kind of struggling uh, because I'm the kind of person like I will have notes like in notebooks, uh, different like calendar apps, note apps in Google Docs, like everything is just like spread out everywhere. Um, and that is where AkiFlow comes in. AkiFlow is basically like a digital planner and where you can time block different slots for different tasks. And what I really enjoy with it, uh, I've been using it for a while now, is that you have a place called the inbox where you can put all your tasks. So almost like you have like a notes app <laughs> inside your calendar, because I find it really difficult when you have like everything in different places. And that is really kind of the whole gist of Akiflow is that you can have everything integrated and you can also integrate your Google calendar, Notion and all these different tools. So it everything works just seamlessly. So you have everything in one place. This is one really cool feature in Akiflow that I like, which is the command bar. So when you just hit command K, you get this window popping up with everything. You can plan a task, snooze a task, set deadlines, mark it's done, assign a label, kind of a shortcut. And I feel like there's so many good shortcuts that I probably don't know yet. The one thing that has always been bugging me with paper calendars, even though I'm like a really 
notebook lover is that usually the days that I've planned, things happen, it doesn't tend to go the way that I planned originally. So then it would get really messy and things would have to get moved around. And here you can just drag and drop them. You can change it up as the day goes along. So it's really flexible. So if you're looking for a solution <laughs> and planning, and that's something you'd like to just get more organized, uh, I can really recommend you try it. Akiflow, at least for me, it's been working really nicely. And uh, also it is worth the effort um, in putting the time in, in planning, uh, even though I can totally relate to anyone who thinks like, oh, bad, I don't have the time. I thought so too, but this is actually providing me with so much more space and this calmness in my head. Today I am wearing my Stay Up Till Dawn sweater, which is from my book, but I also have it as a single pattern, both at kutubakiko.com and in my Ravelry store. And this really works nicely, like at the moment. Uh, what I kind of like to wear mostly is there these like knitted skirts that are just very flexible. <laughs> so this is kind of a cropped sweater, so it just looks really nice, I think, when I have it like this and it's very knitted in a very chunky yarn. It's super cold outside today, so it's just like super comfy um, and just works like really well, I think, with a skirt, even with my <laughs> big belly. But I want to show you the Bubblicious sweater because I've finished now the body and one sleeve, so I only have one sleeve left to go. Um, and you can kind of start to see, I mean, everything looks kind of silly on me at the moment, because uh, I have this huge belly, so it's like really hard to assess uh, lengths and sizes. Um, I do know that this is probably like a size large and usually I knit for myself size like small or medium, like size two or three. Um, but uh, I think like overall, like the design, you can kind of see or envision how it's gonna be. Of course, now it's not blocked yet, but I mean, I am really, really happy with how it looks. Like at some point I thought like maybe it's too busy, but then I thought, you know what? Like it's nice to go all in with all of the textures and all of the cables. There's someone at the door. Ooh. Well, who's that? Are you also like that? Like every time there's somebody at the door and you don't know, like you're not expecting anything. Like I always freak out a little bit, but it was just a delivery for Yuki. So I'm gonna go and bring it down for him because he's been waiting for some materials. Hey, that's the last one. It's a Usually it's quite nice that we're both home so much and I think it's gonna be really nice once the baby comes that we both have such flexible um, timetables of course then the challenges is sometimes that you get a little crazy when you're just at home like I at least definitely need to go into the city as well and see like other people today I'm gonna go in I'm gonna meet Sylvie my dear friend um, so that's gonna be nice and oh yeah so okay the bubblicious sweater I think we're feeling confident um, I think I'm gonna have to make another smaller sample as well I'm gonna try to get this uh, for tech editing to get the pattern done like next week and probably be able to release this like maybe March, April, depending on like how many issues there are. <laughs> there are always some issues, um, but I wanted also to share. So yesterday I went into Snurre, which is one of my favorite yarn shops here in Helsinki. And I got these hand dyed colors. Look how gorgeous they are. And um, I've been thinking about wanting to make something like with hand dyed yarns because they have such gorgeous like these speckles. These are uh, Tour Le Matin or yeah, Tour Le Matin uh, yarns. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's a French brand. Um, this one is from Hedgehog Fibers. Um, so this I'm imagining being my kind of base color and you kind of see that it has like these purple speckles. So then this purple, the pink and the kind of ochre, I think are gonna be super, super nice. And maybe I'm gonna get a little bit inspired from, this is my Dirty Caramel sweater that I also did for my book, 
which um, I'm actually in the process of now. This spring, I'm gonna roll out all of the patterns from my book, Knit This, are gonna come out a single pattern. So you'll be able to purchase them all as single patterns. And the Dirty Caramel Sweater is definitely one of, oh, it's been, <laughs> been folded up so long, so it's a little wrinkly, but um, one of, I mean, this was so nice to knit the color work. So I um, want to do something, um, well, I mean, obviously not exactly like this, but yeah, something um, with color work. I haven't done that in a long time. And at the moment, I'm really craving just color um, or kind of like really, you know, like this uh, bubblegum pink purples. I did the Daydreamer cardigan and also this kind of lavender color. So at the moment, and I mean, this is pink and also this one, um, that I showed you that I'm working on this really, really simple one um, is also in a blush pink color. So um, sometimes I feel like, oh, I shouldn't have like too much pink. My Instagram feed is gonna be all pink and maybe somebody who doesn't like it uh, will be turned off. But no, I really feel like I'm just knitting for my own joy and I'm gonna go with it. I know I'll have then times where I feel like knitting more kind of neutral colors. So right now, this is what I'm embracing. Really, really like how this is turning out. I don't know yet if I'm just gonna, like the neckline looks a little huge at the moment. So I don't know if I'm gonna be picking up stitches and make like a rib here around the neckline. I kind of like that it's so simple. So I'm thinking maybe I'll keep it, but I have to keep on working on it a little bit more. Um, so I'll be able to try it on and see how it looks. Um, I did try it on before I joined together the front. And it looked kind of nice, like casual, chic. Um, but yeah, I have to work on it a little bit more before we see that. Um, but otherwise, that's kind of, I'm gonna have lots of projects, of course, always that I want to be knitting. Um, but this one is a sleeve, I'm gonna work on that. I have the Daydreamer cardigan already sent to a tech editor very proud of that that i didn't procrastinate with that and then i also at the moment i'm going through the oatmeal sweater um back and forth with my tech editor um there were some like mistakes in the charts and things so hoping to get that out as well uh for uh, test knitting as soon as possible uh so i'm really trying to get like as many of my patterns as possible out for test knitting um, so that they'll be in the process of test knitting in March when I have my due date, uh, when I'm probably going to be at least like a couple of weeks in like a baby bubble <laughs> and not be able to at least produce something new or be like make anything sensible out of anything. Um, so hoping to get all that organized before. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for hanging up with me again in this little vlog seeing what i'm up to at the moment i think it's just nice to document these weeks up until the due date uh, it's gonna be nice for myself to just look back at all of this and it's just nice to keep you informed and it was so nice to read all your comments under my last video i asked you um for recommendations on what to knit at the hospital <laughs> um which is kind of a silly question because of course there are lots of other things that are maybe more important but as a knitter you know, I wanted to get some ideas uh, and lots of you said to bring a simple project and maybe also a more complicated project because you don't know in what kind of mood you're going to be. So I'm definitely going to pack in my bag, my hospital bag that I haven't packed yet, that I do need to get started on because it's only like four weeks <laughs> left now. Um going to pack like a really simple project, like some stockinette stitch project and maybe, maybe that color work project that I'm going to start is going to be my other project for for that. Oh. All right, if you'd like to see more of my stuff, as always, you can come and say hi. I'm over at Kotovakika, where I share more behind the scenes and things that are on my deals right now. And if you'd like to get notified every time there's a new video, you can hit subscribe so you get notified. And thank you again for hanging out with me, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.